Hello and welcome to another Fresh Off The Stalls. I say fresh, it should be hashtag cycled back from the stalls, so apologies for looking a bit, a little bit sweaty, a little bit, a little bit flustered. Um, but that's, you know, I'm, I'm being green um, because I need to have some redeemable qualities in my squalid little life as a critic. Anyway, um, recently, and as I always am really, despite my moniker, um, uh, I feel like sometimes, I, I, I don't want to feel like people think that I'm a bit of a pushover uh, as a reviewer that I too easily give four or five stars. I give four and five stars to things because I genuinely think the things I've been to see um, are actually that great. And I know we can get into a whole debate about star ratings and the subjectivity, blah, 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 blah. I'll write an opinion piece about that at some point soon. Um, I, what I what I always say is what I honestly think is uh, what, what I honestly feel about the piece. Uh, if you disagree or you think I'm being insincere, read someone else's review. So uh, slightly refreshing tonight to have gone to see something I really didn't like, and that's so awkward uh, because despite being grumpy, I genuinely want to give as much positive and constructive feedback to any production, be it bad or good, and nothing. Very few things are perfect. Um, so, <laughs> I might as well just come out with it. I might as well just uh, break the, the, the awkwardness and see, say what I've been to see tonight. Vernon got little at the space. I had high hopes of this. Um, the adaptation being used as one done at the Young Vic a while ago to great acclaim. Uh, I've generally only seen really good things at the space uh, in uh, uh, in Millwall slash Eye of Dogs, and uh, I think it's a great little theatre that really needs to be supported. Um, so yeah, uh, and I don't know the book, I'll say that right, I haven't read the book, uh, but doing a bit of research, yeah, and looking at a bit of a very brief overview, uh, it looked really interesting. It's a narrative of really complex themes about some really scathing satire uh, and some very um, contemporary and relevant satire to um, how, we view, uh, how we view the world and, uh, and the media influence and hyperbole. So, uh, what didn't I like about this? Um, I want to say the adaptation was too long. I don't, I haven't actually read any criticism of, uh, of, of the Young Vic production. Um, but, I don't know, uh, it's, it's very comprehensive for what I can only assume not having read the book. Uh, and I say it feels too long, but it might be something, uh, that might be partly due to something I'm going to move on to it in a moment. Um, and I think that is, and I, I think the, the reason really is the direction um, of the show. Now, I'm not gonna, just going to go to town in it. I can absolutely see what the production is trying to do here. So this is a, a world of farce and ridiculousness where the central character, Vernon, is the only is the epicenter of any sort of logic and reason. So what the, uh, the production is doing is everything else that's kind of the pantomime that's going around is done really energetically, really ridiculous. Um, unfortunately, it's done too much. Uh, some of the things just seem to rattle through and uh, on to next. Oh, silly thing, silly thing, on to next. And it's just like, oh, it's just tiring and I'm not really getting any sort of sense of what's really going on. I'm not really getting a sense of what's really relevant to the plot, what's moving the plot along. And it's just, it, it creates too much of, uh, well, in my case, I, I just became far too disconnected from what's going on in, uh, in the show. It was just like, uh, <sighs> Yeah, um, there's people dressed as chickens, and it's a bit silly. Um, yeah, I just, I just did, I just didn't feel it. I can understand it, though. I can understand the vision, and I can understand the reasoning behind it. Uh, and I think what frustrated me the most is that ha seeing what they're trying to achieve, and uh, well, uh, understanding what they're trying to achieve, and then seeing them not execute it too well. Um, now. That really is a problem. For me, the bits of the show that worked best was when it slowed down and really dwelled upon some of the um, some of the really intelligent themes uh, and uh, and points of view uh, that I can't remember the name. Uh, D. B. C. Pierre, the author of uh, of the original novel, are trying to get across. In those moments, the production finds a real humanity among the audacity, and those moments are actually quite compelling. Uh, moments include um, when uh, Vernon, Vernon is speaking to uh, the, 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 the pastor LaSalle. Um, there's, some, there's some really, really deep stuff in there. 
And uh, when when given the chance to actually for the, the audience not to be distracted, but much to, to sort of like focus and become involved, it's actually, as I said, quite compelling. So there are moments where the production can really tease out something from uh, from the text, and they do do it quite well, but it's just when it gets back into the like, whoa, everything's silly, everything's a, a bit of a farce, everything's a bit of a joke, everything's a bit of a, a bit of a panto, which, yes, that is the point of the narrative and the point of how it, uh, it's presented. But, as I said, it's, it's just too much, um, and it, it just makes the audience disconnect, especially it's over two and a half hours long, including uh, in interval at the moment, uh, as it is. Um, as I said, it's quite a comprehensive adaptation. Um, you really kind of make sure you don't, you know, you, you keep the, the audience with you uh, at points. And that's just, that's just my opinion. Uh, I'm clearly not directing as a profession, so take from that what you will. But as I said, I really understand. Great other things about the direction. Uh, what I love about seeing anything at the space is to see what a production does with its flexibility and its setup. So at this time, um, we're, what is usually the stage is now the audience. Uh, and so you're looking kind of rather than towards the old pulpit area, you're now sitting on the old pulpit area and looking back towards the back of a church. By doing that, the production has been able to use uh, the old uh, balcony for bits, which is really interesting. It added a really great sort of uh, visual variety and I don't, I, not depth, I suppose, height uh, on some of the things, which got across some of uh, a couple of dramatic moments rather well. So uh, as far as directing to the space, uh, I've really got to commend uh, um, the company uh, on this as well. Uh, other things I loved about the cast, I think I really sh uh, loved about the show, is the cast. <laughs> well, I gave it away too soon. Um, it's a really good cast on board, actually, uh, despite the fact they're um, half the time they're doing silly things. Uh, Callum McGowan as Vernon is brilliant throughout. He really gets that sense of a sort of frustrated, uh, disenfranchised um, sort of uh, grotty, um, mouthy teenager who, I mean, the character's put through some pretty ridiculous things. Uh, I just love the fact where he sits there and he kind of, he, he broods and then he sort of, yeah, and you kind of get that sense of uh, stroppy, stroppy vulnerability with him. And there's some, some moments, especially when, when you're allowed to come into the, come into the play and not be distanced by, uh, uh, by too much activity, you really sense that. Also, um, Chin uh, Nenwe as LaSalle, uh, and particularly as LaSalle is really good. That's all, as I said, it's one of the, my favorite moments from uh, the entire production. I also really loved um, Bart Edwards as uh, Lally, who is a brilliant baddie, absolutely fantastic. I was just like, I really hate you. You're hot, but I really hate you as this character. I'm sure he's a lovely person in real life. Um, and kind of, he, he, he kind of comes along sort of like, has that swaggering sex appeal and like, uh, and that real smarminess. So he just kind of like, just, you just hate him. And I think that's exactly the kind of thing you want to get over. He's, the arrogance, he's wonderful at playing arrogant character, uh, this really arrogant character. Uh, also, um, Ella, uh, uh, Eleanor, Match and Fortune as Ella, I got a bit confused there, um, is also really good. It's kind of uh, also almost a sort of minor character, but she's kind of, um, I don't know, I feel like she's almost the Ophelia of the piece, to make a, to make a Hamlet reference. This kind of like, um, almost sort of tragic character, but she really comes into own, and there's a, there's a real, there's a real sense of, of, of that sort of, um, that sort of tragedy, I, I can't think of any other words at the moment. This is what happens when you cycle several miles and then do a video review um, to that. So, and, you know, I can't really fault anything with the rest of the cast either. I'm just picking out those, one, two, three, those, those four. Oh, no, I want to mention uh, Charlie Haskins. That's this, that's the fourth. One, two, three, that, that's the fifth one, actually, as Dr. Goosens. He's a great comic actor, actually, uh, and um, playing, well, he, Dr. Goosens is one of the characters he plays, but he actually... He's the one character I think that really gets the sort of uh, the farce element of it and plays it quite well as, as a comic actor. And I really enjoyed his um, his, his comic turns, uh, and I think he got the the, the tone of them quite uh, you know sort of bang on. So yeah, it's a great cast behind the show as well. Other things I am probably going to be a bit mean about sound design. Please, please, if you're going to not be using stage guns, which is quite 
a, a, a feature on the fringe because stage guns are really expensive. Um, not just to hire, but for also the blank shots that they use. And they're also slightly dangerous. Uh, I have used one um, well, well back in the day. Um, and so, fine, I understand you can't use stage guns, but if you are going to use not stage guns, and actually that's one of the other things I like, using remote controls instead of guns. Ah, I see, uh, ooh, uh, uh, you know, very intelligent, very very witty, very abstract. You know, television guns, there, yeah, yes, death by media. Um, I love that, actually. Uh, but if you're going to use that, please get some decent gunshot sound effects. Um, and I, I don't want to be totally immersed in thinking that someone's actually fired a gun. Good grief. I just want something that doesn't sound bad i know and I, I can't i it's it's i know it sounds really negative but this go this is me being grumpy get good sound effects also if you're going to be having like um voices disembodied voices with reverb don't cut the don't cut it off until the reverb is actually finished um I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to be about you. sort out the sound design uh get some decent sound effects know when to cut uh, sound effects off. Don't cut them off prematurely. Um, and I'm just going to say that. I, I, I really am. Um, so, yeah. Um, I would actually, in saying all that, as I said, I understand the vision, even though it, it didn't come across well. There's a great cast on board. The uh, the director, I should actually say the director's name, I haven't. Um, so Catherine Timms, the director, uh, is, makes good use of the space. And I said, brings out, brings out a real sense of drama where you're actually allowed to connect with the play and not sort of like put off 